दास भगत अर्हत समबुद्धस नमो तस् भगवत अर्हत समबुद्धस नमो तस् भगवत अर्हत समबुद्धस हो मेस्ट द ब्लेसड वन दिवन द सुप्रीम लेन लाइट एन वन साध 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 नमो बुद्धाय venerable mahasangha and meritorious devotees supreme buddha used many stories to encourage his disciples to achieve the end of suffering mm. without missing this opportunity without wasting time because he realized how precious this human life is now we are going to listen to some instructions given to the monks by the blessed one so these instructions will help us to be diligent in this dhamma practice in this collection of suttas supreme buddha uses the stories of heavenly world especially how the leader of gods sakadeva practices dhamma and in many of these suttas supreme buddha asks monks to imitate god sakha imitation means uh, supreme buddha asks even that god practices these good qualities like this even though he has been born as a powerful god so how how hard you should practice this dhamma having been ordained in this dhamma and discipline well proclaimed by the tathagata why are you lazy and supreme buddha ask like that On one occasion the blessed one was dwelling at Savatthi in Jetha's grove on Anatha Pindika's park there the blessed one addressed the bhikkhus thus bhikkhus bante those bhikkhus replied and they were ready to pay attention to the buddha the blessed one said this bhikkhus once in the past the asuras marched against the devas so this is about invisible world there are two groups mm. one group is called asuras or titans the other group is 
devas sometimes they are friendly but most of the times they are fighting each other so in this case asuras marched against the devas so primuda saw that with his divine eye then sakka lord of the devas addressed suvira a young deva thus who is the lord of the devas sakka sakka deva and where does she live in the tavatins heaven he is the leader in that heavenly world he and there was a young deva named suvira and he addressed this young deva dear suvira these asuras are marching against the devas now asuras are going to fight with the devas Gaudiya Savira launch a counter march against the asuras now you have you should go there and stop them yes your lordship suvira replied he said okay okay i will go but he became negligent he was lazy to go a second time sakka address suvira dear suvira now asuras are going to destroy us you should go there and stop them you should defeat them and what was the reply okay okay lordship i will go but he didn't go he postponed a third time sakka address suvira Savira dear Savira these asuras are marching against the devas go dear Savira launch a counter march against the asuras and he said yes your lordship but a third time Savira became negligent he didn't go then because sakka addressed Savira in verse and sakka realized that suvira young deva is lazy he is not strong he is weak and he addressed this deva in verse where one need not toil and strive yet still may attain to bliss go there suvira and take me along with you do you understand the meaning this god sakka said to suvira okay if you know some place very happy place that you can enjoy all the wonderful things but without working hard like if you know any exam that you can pass easily without studying without making notes without working hard tell me about that like that he said if you know any any happiness which can be gained through laziness go there okay achieve that and take me along with you and so he said that a lazy man who does not toil does not work hard make efforts no attend to his duties he doesn't fulfill his responsibilities might still have all desires fulfilled grant me that sak as a boon and he asked where is that place tell me sak i i like to go there i like to experience that happiness and then sak again said where a lazy man who does not toil might achieve unending bliss go there suvir and take me along with you again suvir said the bliss supreme deva we might find without doing work o sakka the sorrowless state without despair 
grant me that succor as a boon again succor said if there exists any place anywhere where without work one won't decline that is indeed nibbana's path go there swear and take me along with you and saka said there is a very special path called noble eight fall path even to follow that path one has to be very energetic and once you get there there is nothing to do anymore the only place without works is nibbana and then supreme buddha instructed the monks so because if sakka lord of the devas subsisting on the fruit of his own merit exercising supreme sovereignty and rulership over the tavatin sadevas will be one who speaks in praise of initiative and energy supreme buddha says now the leader of gods sakka deva enjoys heavenly places he has everything right all the places but even this sak god of the Le- devas praises effort energy because he can be lazy very easily he doesn't have to do anything because he has uh, wonderful things happy things supreme buddha says then how much more would it be fitting here for you who have gone forth in such a well expounded dhamma and discipline to toil struggle and strive for the attainment of the as yet unattained for the achievement of the as yet unachieved for the realization of the as yet unrealized how much more would it be fitting for you to work hard to do what to realize this dhamma that's how supreme buddha encouraged the disciples there is another story about the patience of uh, god uh, sakka and supreme buddha instructs the monks uh, think about the patience of uh, sakka deva you also should be patient like that do you know about patience is it a good quality or bad quality good quality at savatthi the blessed one said this once in the past because the devas and asuras were arrayed for battle what are they going to do Mm, they are going to fight then vepachitti lord of asuras addressed the asuras thus what is the name of the lord of asuras vepachitti dear sirs in the impending battle between the devas and asuras if the asuras win and the devas are defeated bind sakka bind sak lord of the devas by his four limbs and neck and bring him to me in the city of the asuras okay and sak lord of the devas addressed the tavatin sa devas thus dear sirs in the impending battle between the devas and the asuras if the devas win and the asuras are defeated bind vepachitti lord of the asuras by his four limbs and neck what are the four limbs two hands and two legs and bring him to me in the sudhamma assembly hall in the battle because what happened the devas won 
and the asuras were defeated then the tavatinsa devas bound vepajitti by his four limbs and neck and brought him to sakka in the sudamma assembly hall how do they how do they bind with ropes with a thought when sakka was entering and leaving the sudamma assembly hall vepachiti bound by his four limbs and neck abused and reviled sakka with rude harsh words now he is very angry right because he was defeated <laughs> now he hmm? he abuses and reviles sakka but sakka is very patient and calm and silent he doesn't say anything against those harsh words so the then supreme lord says then because matali the chariot the, the driver of uh, the sakka the chariot address sakka lord of the devas in verse when face to face with vepachitti is it magava from fear or weakness that you endure him so patiently listen to his harsh words what did he ask now look at that vepachitti he always abuses you using harsh words but you don't do anything you have defeated him why don't you do anything against him why don't you uh abuse him why don't you hit him are you afraid of him or are you weak then sakka because uh, sakka is very powerful the leader of gods and he has already defeated the asura that leader uh, sakka could have punished vepachit easily but he doesn't do anything and he asked why are you afraid of uh, vepachitti or are you weak to do something against him then sakka replied it is neither through fear nor weakness that i am patient with vepachitti how can a wise person like me engage in combat with a fool and matali driver had another question fools would vent their anger even more if no one would keep them in check foolish people they would do more bad things if uh, wise people don't do something to tame them hence with drastic punishment the wise man should restrain the fool so wise people should use punishments to restrain foolish people why don't you use punishments sakka said i myself think this alone in the way to check the fool when one knows one's for is angry one mindfully maintains one's peace Sakka says, I know a best way to tame my enemy. What is the best way? When one knows one's enemy is angry, if one is patient, that is the best weapon in the battle. That is the best weapon to tame one's enemy. is that true is that easy if someone has gets angry at us do we use that weapon patient no we we try to use harsh words words against that person that's not the hard battle that's an easy thing to do what is the hard, hard thing to have the patience but matali he did not uh, admitted this completely i see this fault o oh, asava 
Vaso means another name for the sucker. I see this fault in practicing patient endurance. When the fool thinks of you thus, he endures me out of fear. The doll will chase you even more as a bull does one who flees. But I, I don't think that patience is completely right. Because when you are patient, that fool may think, oh, this person is patient because of fear. So I can do, I can harm him again. Then Sakka replied, let it, let it be whether or not he thinks he endures me out of fear. That's okay. He, he, he may think that I, I am patient out of fear. It doesn't matter for me. Of goals that culminate in one's own good, none is found better than patience. Still, I don't want to engage with the fool. So, what is the characteristic of a fool? Anger. If the other person also is trying to solve that problem with anger, then he also falls into that category of fools. He says, it doesn't matter whether he thinks or not that I am a, I am afraid of him out of fear. I still am patient. None is found better than patience. When a person endowed with strength patiently endures a weakling, they call that the supreme patience. The weakling must be patient always. They call that strength no strength at all, the strength that is the strength of folly. But no one can reproach a person who is strong because guarded by Dhamma. One who repays an angry man with anger thereby makes things worse for himself. Do you understand? One who repays an angry man with anger thereby makes things worse for himself. He's not going to solve any problem. Yes, it will get worse and worse. Not repaying an angry man with anger, one wins a battle hard to win. How to win that battle that is hard to win? Not repaying an angry man with anger. He practices for the welfare of both his own and the others. When knowing that his enemy is angry, he mindfully maintains his peace. When he achieves the cure of both, his own and the others, the people who consider him a fool are unskilled in the Dhamma. Patient people practice a good quality which lead for the welfare of himself and for the welfare of others. But foolish people may think, oh, they are called unskilled people in the Dhamma. They may think, why? Why are you patient? You go and do something. You are like a very weak person. Don't people say like that in the society? Uh, Supreme Buddha say, uh, Sakka says, no. Unskilled people in the Dhamma think that way. None is better than patience. Then Supreme Buddha used this story to instruct the monks. So because if Sakka, Lord of the Devas, 
subsisting on the merit on the fruit of his own merit exercising supreme sovereignty and rulership over the tavatins devas will be one who speaks in praise of patience and gentleness then how much more would it be fitting here for you who have gone forth in such a well expounded dhamma and discipline to be patient and gentle can't we apply this instruction to our lives like we can sometimes we can we can understand some people uh, maybe some uh, children they are very patient they are very calm peaceful sometimes they haven't heard the dhamma a lot they haven't practiced uh, this dhamma a lot but still they are very patient they are very calm so shouldn't we think that we practice this dhamma we listen to many discourses then shouldn't we practice patience well we should so especially for children so when you sometimes when your friends are angry at you and when they try to fight with you should you go and fight with them hmm? if they use harsh words maybe some in uh, in your schools or classes there are maybe a lot of friends who doesn't know anything about the dhamma so if they use harsh words right to address you if they kick you right if they steal things from you should you get angry at them as the sons and daughters of the supreme buddha should you get angry at them should you go and steal their things no patience is a very good thing for all of us okay listen to this story because once in the past the devas and the asuras were arrayed for battle in that battle the asuras won and the devas were defeated this time what happened <laughs> asuras won and the devas were defeated in defeat the devas withdrew towards the north while the asuras pursued them right and they was uh, wanted to run away but still asuras didn't give up and they pursued followed them okay then sakka lord of the devas addressed his chariot here mathali in verse so they hap- they were uh, traveling a uh, special wood called the silk cotton wood uh, and there were birds nests there in that forest so this sakka uh, and mathali mm, this driver was taking this divine vehicle through that forest and suddenly sakka said to mathali avoid o mathali with your chariot fall the bird nests in the silk cotton woods don't go forward stop let's surrender our lives to the asuras rather than make these birds nestless okay let's get killed okay we should not destroy these nests of birds yes your lordship Mathali the charioteer replied and he turned back the chariot he turned back the divine vehicle with its team of a thousand thoroughbreds there were divine houses thousand houses 
to which side now asuras are following so matali turn back the vehicle to which side now they are going facing enemies saka they we saw they they may kill us let's go we should not kill these birds then because it occurred to the asuras who were following chasing after now saka's chariot with its team of a thousand thoroughbreds has turned back the devas will engage in battle with the asuras for a second time maybe now they have become strong and coming back to fight with us stricken by fear they entered the city of the asuras <laughs> they went back they ran ran away thinking oh now devas are coming to fight again in this way because sakka the lord of the devas won a victory by means of righteousness itself that day devas won that battle the sakka won a victory by the dhamma dhamma practice righteousness these are very good lessons for our lives sometimes when we are going to lose things we may think okay i will break the precept go ahead and do it but sakka he wanted to protect the first precept what is the first precept not to kill any living being if we take things lightly that's not a good habit that's a mm, supreme that told this story this story because once in the past a number of seers who were virtuous and of good character had settled down in leaf huts along the shore of the ocean here seers means uh, the sages you know sages who meditate in forests they are not the disciples of the buddha because uh, at that time the buddha's teaching is not found but in india in some time periods there are recluse sage seers who uh, rena- renounce this worldly pleasures material things go into a forest and meditate and they develop jhanas right so there are uh, a number of seers now on that occasion the devas and the asuras were arrayed for a battle then he took her to those seers who were virtuous and of good character the devas are righteous devas are good the asuras are righteous they are bad they are may be danger to us from the asuras that is why lok samnasi says when people try to follow good qualities to follow the teachings of the buddha to follow the precepts to do meritorious things asuras are against them because this happened that time also those seers thought they are maybe danger to us from the asuras because they don't like good qualities now in this time period in present who are the powerful beings devas or asuras asuras because the teaching of the supreme buddha uh, t- true teaching is very hard to f- find 
So very few people are reborn as gods, devas. But many people are reborn as asuras. So their power is much more than the power of the devas. So asuras have, uh, according to these suttas, asuras might have uh, invaded the whole human world. Non-humans, ghosts, and other harming spirits are uh, controlled by those asuras. So this is a very good sutta to understand about this nature of the world. So they thought, yes, there may be dangers to us from the asuras. Let us approach Sambara, Lord of Asuras. So, this Sambara is in the Lord of the the bad team of Asuras, and ask him for a guarantee of safety before they start the battle. Let's go and tell him that don't harm us. We are very uh, virtuous and we are innocent. We we don't harm others. Let's go and tell them. Then because just as quickly as a strong man might extend his drawn in arm or draw in his extended arm, those seers disappeared from their leaf huts and reappeared in the presence of Sambar, Lord of the Asuras. Didn't they have psychic powers? When ha even when they had psychic powers, they thought asuras. Hmm? Asuras are dangerous; they can harm us. Do we have psychic powers? <laughs> we don't have the power to be awake. Sleepiness overcome us. What about psychic powers? That's why Luxan says we should be very humble. We should be very humble. We should be very careful. Because we are very weak. Anyone can destroy our good qualities. Anyone can block our path if we are not mindful. Right? So this is a very good example. Even though they had psychic powers, they could disappear from their leaf hearts in a, in a second, using their psychic powers and appeared in the Asura's world. Then those seers addressed Sambara in verse. The seers who have come to Sambara ask him for a guarantee of safety. For you can give them what you wish, whether it be danger or safety. We know that you can give danger or safety to others, but we ask you for a guarantee of safety. Please don't harm us. Because they knew in case if the Devas were defeated, Asuras are going to take the power. They knew that. Now in our time period, it has happened. Sambara said, I will grant no safety to the seers. What did he say? I will grant no safety to the seers. For they are hated devotees of Sakka. And he knew that seers like Sakka. And they are in Sakka's side. Because though you appeal to me for safety, I will give you only danger. <laughs> then the seer said, Okay, though we have asked for safety, you give us only danger. We receive this at your hands. May ceaseless danger come to you. What did they say? 
What did they do? They cursed. These rushis, these seers, cursed using their power, mental power. They cursed. How? Okay, we ask you for safety, but you don't like to give it. We curse you. May ceaseless danger come to you. May you not escape from fear. And they added, whatever sort of seed is sown, that is the sort of fruit one reaps. The doer of good reaps good. The doer of evil reaps evil. By you, dear, has the seed been sown, thus you will experience the fruit. Okay. Then because having put a curse on Sambar, lord of the Asuras, just as quickly as a strong man might extend his drawn in arm or draw in his extended arm, those seers disappeared from the presence of Sambar and reappeared in their leaf huts. But after being cursed by those seers, who were virtuous and of good character, Sambara, Lord of the Asuras, was gripped by alarm three times in the course of the night. As a result of that curse, this Sambara, Lord of the Asuras, doesn't have a good sleep. Every night he wakes up three times. Trembling in fear. Why? Whatever sort of seed is sown, that is the sort of fruit one reaps. So it is a very good stanza to memorize. Right? When we do things, whatever we give to others, that is the result we are going to gain. If we give anger to others, we are going to receive anger from others. If you are going to give compassion to the world, then only we are going to gain, receive compassion from others. If we are honest, if we share honesty with others, then others will be honest to us. If we are going to cheat others, then others will cheat us. How do you think, like, uh, do people worship the God or the God worship the good people? How do we know that? Like, don't people worship uh, the God, the gods, offering things and like that? Hmm? Don't people do that? They do. So, what is the correct way? How how can we know? Are gods higher than uh, humans, or are humans higher than God? Then why do our parents uh, pay homage to gods, worship gods, our grandmothers, grandfathers? Hmm? Yes, it is true that gods are higher than the ordinary humans. Think about these good, good qualities of these gods. But Think about this story. The, the, the Blessed One said this, because once in the past, Sakka, Lord of the Devas, addressed his chariot here mortally thus, Harness the chariot with its team of a thousand thoroughbreds, Friend Matali, let us go to the park grounds to see the beautiful scenery. Now they are going to see Nandana Park. Okay, 
heavenly park. Yes, your lordship, Mahathali, the charioteer replied. Then he harnessed the chariot with its team of a thousand thoroughbreds and announced to Sakka, uh, the chariot, chariot has been harnessed, dear sir, you may come at your own convenience. Then because Sakka, lord of the devas, descending from the Vajayanta palace, raised his joined hands in reverential salutation and worshipped the different quarters. He got off the divine vehicle and joined his hands together and worshipped the different quarters. That means, yes, four directions. Then Matali, the charioteer, addressed Sakka in verse. These all humbly worship you. Those versed in the triple Ved, all the Khatiyas uh, ruling on earth, the four great kings and the glorious thirty. So who Sakka is that spirit to whom you bow in worship? Matali asked, all the other devas with the four great kings and other humans worship you. So this Matali asked, to whom you bow in worship? Everybody worships you. Who is better than you? And Sakka said, yes, these all humbly worship me the four great kings and other devas. But I worship those endowed with virtue, those long trained in concentration, those who have properly gone forth with the holy life, their destination. I worship the supreme Buddha and the Arahants. I worship as well, O Matali, those householders making merit, the lay followers possessed of virtue who righteously maintain a wife. So this first sutta says, uh, yes, next sutta says about his worships to the Supreme Buddha. This sutta explains, and the Sakha says, I worship those endowed with virtue, long trained in concentration, who have properly gone forth with the with Nibbana their destination. To the Arahans and other monks who are on the path to Nibbana. So what does Sakha do? Sakka worship them, looking at the human world, to the monks. Then he worships the householders making merit. Who are the householders? The disciples of the Supreme Buddha, the lay people, Upasakas and Upasikas. Virtuous who righteously maintain a wife and children. That means, and he says here, I worship husbands who looks uh, who look after their wives compassionately and who treat their children well. I worship good fathers and good mothers, the disciples lay disciples of the Buddha. Then Matali said, Those whom you worship, my Lord Sakka, are indeed the best in the world. I too will worship them, those whom you worship, Vasava. Then the Blessed One recited this verse. Having given this explanation, having worshipped the different quarters, the Deva King Magava, Suja's husband. So Magava means a name for the Sakka. Suja's husband is a name for the 
Saka. So this Suja is uh, the chief queen of Asuras. So in the battle, the Saka defeated Asuras and took the most beautiful girl of Asuras as his wife. And her name is Suja. So the, there is a name for Saka, Sujampati, Suja's husband. So Prima says the Suja's husband, the chief climbed into his chariot having worshipped the Arans, other virtuous monks and good mothers and fathers, lay followers of the Buddha, he climbed into his chariot. Another day, uh, Sakka, Lord of Devas, descending from the Vajayanta Palace, raised his joined hands in reverential salutation and worshipped the Blessed One. Then Matali, the chariot, addressed Sakka, Lord of the Devas, in verse. So this time, to whom uh, did Sakka worship? To the Supreme Buddha. And he asked, both devas and human beings humbly worship you, Vasava. So who, O Sakka, is that spirit? Who is that powerful person to whom you bow in worship? It is interesting. Why our grandmothers and grandfathers didn't use the photo of Sakka? Sakka Deva. What happened to that picture? He is a disciple of the Buddha. He is a stream entrant. See how, how wrong we practice things. But now if you go to visit some Buddha Rajamalinga, now Loksana has introduced who are the uh, like the wish gods are the disciples of the Buddha and who are virtuous gods and there is a beautiful statue of Sakka, God Sakka. And Luxase has put uh, f the statues of four great kings. See, did you have the pictures of four great kings? He didn't even know the names. Viruda, Virupak, Dhatarast, Vaisravana. Are we familiar with those words? No, we are familiar with some other words, names. And so there are four great, uh, but unfortunately you can't see that because it is reserved for monks. And it only uh, for seven days or two weeks, the uh, people could go and visit that upper flat upper level of the Maliga, the palace, the mansion of the Supreme Buddha, where um, the relics, sacred relics are placed. And there is a, did you see those photos? Uh, beautiful big golden color stupa inside that. So in that chamber that um, made of uh, sandalwood, all the four uh, walls. There is that uh, stupa and uh, in the four corners of that sandalwood room there are the statues of four great kings worshipping the relics. Right? So people went there and worshipped uh, in the first two weeks. Now you can't go there. You can see other um, statues, the wonderful statue of the Buddha. And there is one beautiful statue of Sakka, God, uh, leader of gods. And Brahma Sahampati, uh, Ghatikar Brahma. Um, they are the disciples of the Buddha. And very beautiful statues of Mahakasapa Bhante, Ananda Bhante many more statues. So what was the question of Matali? To whom you worship? The Sakka replied, the perfectly enlightened one here in this world with its devas, 
the teacher of perfect name he is the one whom i worship matali so who is superior the devas or the supreme buddha the supreme buddha even the god the leader of gods worship the supreme buddha we didn't know this and he adds those for whom lust and hatred and ignorance have been expunged the arahants with taints destroyed these are the ones whom i worship matale so he first worshiped the supreme buddha secondly he, he worshiped the arahants okay thirdly the trainees who delight in dismantling dismantling means uh, removing desires who diligently pursue the training for the removal of lust and hatred for transcending ignorance these are the ones who my worship matale thirdly he worship the other monks who are not yet arahants but they are honestly practicing the path so god's uh, worship them then matale said those whom you worship my lord sakka are indeed the best in the world i too will worship them those whom you worship vasa so matali also got off the vehicle and worshiped so in this world who are the people worthy of worship first the supreme buddha secondly arahants thirdly virtuous monks trainees next lay disciples of the buddha even gods worship them because they collect merits and sakka said uh, those householders making merit so they was like those people who make merit and follow precepts five precepts eight precepts practice generosity so that is how we learn things correctly right so we share merits with devas because they also like the good qualities they protect the lives of the disciples of the buddha so what did we learn today we learned many things hmm? what did we learn we learned about first sutta now before patience effort hmm huh eh? diligence effort being energetic right mm, no one can achieve happiness being lazy even for ordinary things uh, so for the spiritual gains one has to be energetic and strong mm, not lazy next we learned the quality of yes we learned the importance of patience patience of whose life as an example sakka's life and he from his life supreme buddha pointed out many important ways of thinking about patience no matter how others think of us still wise people practice patience and they think they don't want to engage battle with fools then we learned about how he huh? how he practiced 
precepts without breaking precepts he even for the sake of his life he didn't want to break precepts he was ready to die in the name of the righteousness that is why there is one statement dhamme bhave rakati dhammachari the one who lives in accordance with the dhamma is protected by the dhamma because of his honest heart he won that battle then we learned what else Do you remember these stories? Ah, that is from the story of Sears, right? That Sears asked for guarantee of safety, but they gave some gave danger and fear. As a result of giving danger, he received danger. whatever sort of seed is sown that is the sort of fruit one reaps so if you plant a seed of mango are we going to gain the fruit of uh, banana no it will be mango the doer of good reaps good the doer of evil reaps evil think about this good things that we learn today and finally we learn about the worshiping of the god sakka he first worship the supreme buddha then before he go to uh, divine park he does that okay then he worships arahants next the virtuous monks the trainees of the path then lay people of the supreme buddha so we learned very important things from the teachings of the buddha from sangyutta nikaya we were we have been discussing some sutta from the connected discourses mm, uh, from the section of sakka sakka sangyutta so may all of us cultivate these good qualities gradually using this precious opportunity to escape from suffering through the development of all some qualities and attain nibbana in this gautama buddha's dispensation sadhu sadhu sadhu